Windows 10 is going to be free and full of Spartan, which sounds kind of weird. Watch anything like Curling or Netflix from anywhere you might live or roam, build or buy. That's the question Shannon's working on for her next gaming PC. All this and quite a bit more coming up on Tech Thing. Tech Thing is brought to you by viewers like you. If you get value from the show and would like to support us directly, please consider contributing at patreon.com slash techthing. I'm Shannon Morse. And I'm Patrick Norton. And this is Tech Thing. We make technology behave. And we're going to try to have a little bit of fun doing it. <laughs> yes, we will. Yeah. We like tech, but we love what we can do with it, whether it's getting the latest modal phones or speeding up your gaming PC. New apps or how to make sure your data or that awesome photo doesn't get away. We are here for you, Shannon and I. So get ready to get some questions answered. Speaking of questions, where's your drone? It's right over there. <laughs> um, so if you're watching from the Hack 5 crew, uh, I actually teased my My First Drone segment, which is actually in next week's show. I'll give you a hint, though. It's not the Parrot AR 2.0 or the AirHog's Helix X4, hmm. although there, there are cool features on both of those. They do have some pretty cool features. But my favorite costs half as much, at least until you go nuts with the sickness and start buying all sorts of stuff to go with Ooh, the drone. I'm really curious now. I'll give you a hint. <laughs> drone enthusiasts will know what this uh, is. Everyone yes. else will be like, what is that? <laughs> Amazon? Oh, Amazon? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Amazon. Now we were all set up to chat about LastPass yeah. delivering a native app for OS X. So this is interesting. The LastPass Mac app is here. Instant logins, quick search, security checks. But hey, there were some really, really big news announcements from Microsoft as well this morning. So Windows 10 will be free for Windows and Windows 8.1 phone users. And for the first year, Windows 7 users can score a free upgrade. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Microsoft promises to keep upgrading the operating system. Quote, we will continue to keep it current for the supported lifetime of the device. That's At crazy. no additional charge. With Windows 10, the experience will evolve and get even better over time. We'll deliver new features when they're ready, not waiting for the next major release, which is essentially like... Sounds like Apple. Yeah, well, it's Windows <laughs> as a service. Um, well, it's a little different because they're, they're we're talking about constantly evolving it, unifying the experience into yeah. one Windows 10, right? So it's not going to be like, well, oh, there's, that there's makes Windows. Sense. Well, yeah, it's miserable, right? Because there's Windows Phone, there's mm -hmm. Windows RT, which both people have, then there's like yep. the Windows tablets, and there's the Windows desktop. So, you know, I'm oversimplifying, but developers are probably weeping with joy if something <laughs> will work across all the Windows environments desktop, laptop, tablets, phones. Um, and Windows 10 is going to get a new cool. browser. Uh, a browser. Was, yeah, well, okay. I like the code name for this. Spartan. I am Spartan! Yeah, it's like, you know, <laughs> so many places we can go with this. Oh my gosh, <laughs> but, so many. So, so many very sexy men in, never mind. Get out the oil and, <laughs> and I'm... <laughs> Just watch 300, you'll know what we mean. And if you don't, that's okay, too. So Spartan's going to use Microsoft's Trident rendering engine. You'll have the ability to like mark up pages with a stylus and share your notes with others. Mm. It's going to integrate Cortana, Microsoft's virtual assistant, because, okay. you know, it, it, apparently I need to talk to my browser. Uh, yeah, and... Um, <laughs> Can I just say, screw virtual reality. MS is going augmented reali reality with this thing called HoloLens on Holo Windows Lens. 10. So this could be kind of cool too. Well, this is, so we were, you know, it's, it's interesting. I don't think anybody really expected this, but the idea, so virtual reality is a totally synthetic world inside your glasses, right? Everything yeah. you see is rendered in 3D. Augmented means that there's a fake world that's laid over the real world you can see. And you can kind of yeah. see this, this gaming environment, you know, kind of has a certain Minecraft-y feel because it is Minecraft uh, through the HoloLens. So this person's it's wearing the cool. HoloLens and there's their, their living room furniture and there's Minecraft all <laughs> over it. I want to see little monsters tra tra traipsing around in my living room. Well, that's it would literally, be so cute. That's literally what's going on. <laughs> There's a great write-up on gigaom.com. Yes. Um, actually, it's what we're looking at. Microsoft jumps into augmented reality with HoloLens and Windows 10. And kind of the big deal is that the, you don't, the glasses screen is imperceptible from the real world. That's it's, the, it's one like, of the big quotes I took from here. you seen Minority Report? Yeah. It's kind of like that, where you have like this whole screen up here and you're just moving things around and everything. It's very, very similar to Minority yeah. Report. Really good read. Um, I, I, and that GigaOM article, because it's just, it's, okay, this is compelling. It is. It's very compelling. So, good job. <laughs> we wait, ladies and gentlemen. Good job, Windows. With bated breath. Another one, uh, <laughs> if you want to kind of get the big summary, uh, it was a really good article. Must, what's new in Windows 10 for PCs? A lot. Mm. That's up at Engadget.com. Uh, Aaron Sipporis wrote that up. Good stuff. And suddenly, I've lost the urge to pull Windows 10 technical preview off my laptop. Suddenly. Suddenly. <laughs> 
Well, I was I was kind of like, well, one of the things you know that they talk about in is that they're finally going to sort of fix all of the control panel yeah. issues because you've seen me like it's banging my head against the it's various issue. desktops when dealing with Windows 10 technical preview because things so. are oversimplified. So moving on, um, <laughs> you mentioned on, I believe you were on This Week in, uh, yes. in Tech last week Twit. with Leo Laporte, mm -hmm. Twit, and you mentioned something about curling. Curling. And we got so many questions about that. Usually I just get some 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 emails from people in Canada going, woo, curling, yeah! yeah! <laughs> but this turned into a bunch of questions about how to watch curling and other region-locked video services online, right? Um, first up, if you speak the native language of a country, going to the Google page for that country, say Google Google.ca for Canada, right? You know, I speak yeah. English, or at least I speak American English, can make sports <laughs> or events or obscure sports really easy to find. So, right, you know, if you look at the curling results for the United States, you get a bunch of obscure YouTube videos. If you look at the Google results for curling on Google.ca, what yeah. you get is like the Canadian Curling Association and curling on TSN. Uh, and you get the Wikipedia entry, but you're, you're going to find it, it may be much easier. Oh, Sportsnet curling, right? So you're going to get some stuff that may be much more useful. Mm -hmm. What I found, and a lot of people apparently who are curling enthusiasts or Netflix enthusiasts, if they're overseas, um, you know, you find out like if my IP address isn't in Canada, I get no curling, no curling Region for me. Region locked. That's Region no locked. Fun. Yeah. So this works in reverse. Like I just mentioned, let's say I want to watch Oh House of Cards season whatever is released, okay, but I'm yeah. in Peru, and Netflix refuses to speak to me because I'm in Peru and not in the United States. What that, do you do? Well. I pretend I'm somewhere else. <laughs> I think really hard and I click my heels together three times and say there's no place like, no. Um, <laughs> the solution is pretending you're browsing from the right country. One of the coolest tools for this is called TunnelBear. TunnelBear.com. Um, it's as simple as it gets. You open the TunnelBear app, you change the country and the drop down menu to the correct setting for the country you want to pretend you're in, then you flip the power dial to on, boom, you're done. That's cool. How much does it cost? If you do the free version, you get 500 megabytes. Okay. which is like 20 minutes of video on yeah. a bad day, right? Um, for $4.99 a month or $49.99 a year, you get unlimited okay. video or all the streaming. So it's all almost like the having a cable subscription for whatever country yeah. you want to view. Yeah, and, and I should say it's not, it's not just video. It's any sort of service you want to use that's yeah. prevented from working in your country. Um, and the Tunnel Bear is really simple and they have it for pretty much every platform that are, you might want to run it off of. If you want to run it at the router level at your house or if you want to get more serious about VPN, uh, Lifehacker, uh, Alan Henry over at Lifehacker, we love him. Um, we love Lifehacker, period. But they have their sort of annual roundup of the best five VPN service providers um, and there's good stuff here. Uh, probably the best one still is private internet access. Um, that Ooh. is, it's good stuff. Yes. If you want to learn more about VPNs, v are fun. Yes. <laughs> and if you want to learn more about VPNs, ask at techthing.com and we will we discuss. We can show them how to set up one. Virtual private networks. Fun. All right, so what's going on over at Hack5? Why don't we find out from Darren? Darren. Securing the internet traffic coming out of your phone using SSH tunnels. Sounds complicated, actually a lot easier than you may think. You can do it with free software. We're doing that on Hack5. You don't even need root on your phone. Plus, if you're getting into Arduinos, you're going to want to check this out. Shannon is getting into sketches, doing a little bit of programming, blinking lights, it's good stuff. Check it out on the sister show, Hack5. We're back and it's now time for a rapid fire round. <laughs> so this is where we will try to answer three different questions, give three different recommendations, or review three different products in less than a minute. Are you ready? Go. Go. All right, so Martin asks, how can an average Joe calibrate his or her average HD monitor? I would think calibration on any system would help create more effective photos and videos. First of all, I love someone that uses parentheticals as often as I do. Second of all, if you're talking <laughs> HD as in TV, um, the way to go is Spears and Munsell's HD Benchmark 2nd Edition. It is awesome. It is the definitive tool for DIY home calibration. Ooh. It costs 30 bucks. It's available on Amazon.com or anywhere else. If you want something that's less geeky and more explaining sort of the world of uh, high definition video and sort of encoding, and it's just really cool. The Disney Wow World of Wonder Blu-ray, um, it explains a lot of the hows and whys of HD by Goofy, uh, oh, with some really awesome, so cute. it's so odd, um, <laughs> with excellent Disney movie clips, and that's it includes awesome. the blue filter you need for color and tint setup, just like the mm. Spears and Munsell disc. Now, if you want something free and you want to get your geek on, head over to the AV forums, AVS forums, and check out the AVS HD 709 files. Um, 
it's pretty cool. This is essentially a set of uh, files you can download and burn to a disk and use to seriously tweak out on calibration. All that said, if you're talking about color calibration for Photoshop or Final Cut Pro, mm -hmm. Premiere, or other professional tools, or if you just want consistent colors for pro, prosumer, enthusiast, you know, photo printing, right? Because you yes. look at the photo, and then you look at the print, and then this you vomit the with same frustration. Purple? What you need That's is a thing problem. called, <laughs> yes, the, pur the purple is not the purple. <laughs> It's, so there's reasons, and we're not going to get into them because I have a minute. You want something called a colorimeter. Um, Data Color Spider is pretty good and pretty accessible, okay. and uh, Spider 4 Express, Spider 4 Pro. Essentially, these take a picture of they 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 look at your monitor. They are they are. There's a word in my head. <laughs> They're colorimeters. Basically, they look at the colors in your monitor and allow you to manipulate and adjust them. Awesome. It's pretty cool stuff. All right, our second question comes from Frank. He asks, have you looked at the Spark IO and Spark Core? Could you cover the online IDE PS? So happy that you two are back. <laughs> okay, so you asked that and I basically went down this huge rabbit hole on Adafruit and Spark and the Arduino's website and I was like, whoa, look at all the segment possibilities. This is amazing. So so <laughs> it's is it in an Arduino or is it something you attach to an it's, Arduino it's separate. microcontroller? You would attach okay. it to the microcontroller. So the Sparko, they sell the Photon and the Core. And the Core is a Wi-Fi enabled development board, which you can find over at the Sparko website. And it basically lets you stick it onto an Arduino to make things that work over Wi-Fi, or you can just start with scratch with a breadboard to make your own things. And those could cool. be any things that you want them to be and they would all be Wi-Fi connected. Really, really cool. And this does work with the Spark IDE. So you can find the web IDE over mm -hmm. at spark.io slash build. And this is what it looks like when you first log in. And I can maximize it a little bit. So to give you an example, this is what the code would look like for a really, really simple uh, code segment to blink an LED on your board. <laughs> so if you know any basic C code, you can program in this too, because it looks exactly like the Arduino code as well. So I could talk about this stuff for days and days, <laughs> but that's pretty much what it looks like and where you can find more information about those. Spark.io. Yay! At Morris Bear tweets, what do you think about Dolby Atmos 5.1.4 at home? Is it worth it to spend thousands of dollars and upgrade from 7.1? Regards. It's a little early. There's a maybe little. four Blu-ray titles with Dolby Atmos encoding, and the best of them the whole is four. the whole four. And the best of them is like the worst of the Transformers movies. A lot oh, of Dolby no. Atmos movies in the theater are amazing, but right now, as far as I know, there are literally only four titles. There's some streaming Atmos opportunities. Um, but right now, I would wait for at most, more at most titles and for yeah. at most hardware prices to come down. Um, Robert Heron actually had some really good points to add on to this. He says, I'm waiting for a 4K AVR with HDCP 2.2 plus firmware updates for Atmos, RO3D, and DTS 10. Then he's going to start <laughs> shopping for speakers again. Uh, it is way awesome early questions. for Atmos, though. Great question, though. Yes. Thank you so much for all of your questions. Of course, <laughs> if you guys have a quick question that you want for the rapid fire round, it could be anything. Email us at ask@techthing.com, and we will answer it for you. And we'll be right back after this break. This episode of Tech Thing is brought to you by viewers like you. If you're enjoying the show, please consider donating to our Patreon at patreon.com slash techthing. You can donate a nickel, a dime, or even $5 per episode, and that contribution goes directly back into the show. And remember, if you can't donate, no worries. We'd love it if you shared the show with your friends, subscribed on YouTube, or just sent us your questions on your favorite social network. Thank you so much for supporting Tech Thing. I love this question. Kathleen writes in, does it make any sense to build desktops anymore or is it now just cheaper to buy one? Oh my gosh. This is another one of those questions that I could turn into like an hour, two hour long conversation with somebody. Contain yourself. I'm sorry, but I get so <laughs> excited. So it really depends on the person. For example, right. I have a friend that loves building PCs, but he also doesn't have any time to do all the research and compatibility tests and best find the best hardware, read reviews. So right. he'll probably just buy one because it makes more sense for him. My other friend doesn't care what parts are in his machine as long as it works. So he would probably just buy one and he probably wouldn't well, pay top dime for it. I mean, it's also really weird, like, you know, are you gaming? Yes. If you're not gaming, pff, just yeah. buy whatever. If you're not yeah. gaming or video <laughs> editing or like dealing with like 42,000 cable. Then you could probably just buy one. Excel spread, exactly. Yeah. Or buy just a cheap one because yeah. a Core i3 is going to kick ass until you want to game. Yeah. Q mocking emails. 
so personally yeah. i have time to research like research my butt off especially because it's my job so i'll just build one because it, it and it also i should mention too it depends on whether or not that you want to have a company's warranty because right. a lot of the buy ones that you can just purchase those come with some kind of warranty like if right. you have a defect product inside of it you can just send it back and they'll fix it or they'll replace it well it's also like puget systems they they build a pc then they give yeah. you like all of the manuals for all of the parts in the pc yeah. in a binder they do a 72 hour burn in and the warranty means if it's a problem it's their problem to fix yep. not your problem to yeah fix. so one of the things i also want to mention is like the reason why i build pcs mm -hmm. is because i'm super picky so right. i get to choose exactly what i want exactly the price that I want. I want this case with this motherboard yes. and this processor. And, and this really cool liquid cooling. Well, I, so, you know, <laughs> I was talking to like Ryan Trout and I were, were doing uh, This Week in Computer Hardware earlier this year and it was a running joke like every like eight days there were another 34 new motherboards on the market. Oh my gosh. There are more motherboards so than you need, but you can literally get a motherboard that just about has all of the features you want and yeah. the likelihood of you finding that motherboard from Megacorp PC or even minor PC company is almost it's just not going to happen yeah. probably. <laughs> I'm just so, saying. So <laughs> I ended up doing a whole bunch of research on different ones that you could purchase mm -hmm. some manufacturer PCs with similar hardware to my own build scenarios to see if it would be cheaper or more expensive to build versus buy with that similar hardware. So you should also consider how old mm -hmm. and how reliable the parts are that come in your buy versus a build one as well. So just make sure to keep that in mind too. So for the lower end, I found uh, just an just ex example of what you can find on the market right now. I was able to find a PC on here, which I was able to you know, add on a few extras, like I upgraded to a fourth gen i5 as opposed to the fourth gen i3. And you're up on hp.com right now. Yeah, hp.com, okay. and I just picked out, let's see, this is the HP Pavilion 500T. So this is more of a lower end one that you could still play a few video games on. Kind of. Eight gigs of RAM, <laughs> kind of. One terabyte hard drive, no solid state, so I didn't upgrade that and then a one Nvidia uh, one gig Nvidia GeForce GT705 that comes out to 653 bucks now if I do a comparative model over here on pcpartpicker.com it'll be a little bit more expensive 776.81 right. cents and that does not include a case or peripherals so if you don't already have those things that's going to increase your price if okay, you're building so it okay so if you so if that was 776 without a case mm -hmm. okay so one of the things to think about is when HP or Dell or any other major PC manufacturer buys parts they're buying 10,000 of them at once oh, yeah. and when you buy 10,000 of them at once you get a discount on them <laughs> it's as you start to get into more the the, the more high-end GPUs more high-end CPUs their price buying advantage gets this is I guess my my sign for smaller <laughs> smaller it's so, so beautiful you also looked at a Dell XPS 8700. I did, yeah. So the 8700, you can get this one for about a thousand bucks or 1100, depending on which upgrades you choose. Uh, this one comes with Windows 8.1, 16 gigs of RAM, as opposed to just eight, a two terabyte hard drive, which is pretty sweet, and an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 745. If I build the same one, or one that's very, very close to this, I actually didn't have the choice to do the 745, so I did the 770, mm -hmm. uh, which is a little bit of more of an upgrade. It's 1050, so it's incredibly close in price. That's but practically again, a wash. The case. Okay. Yeah. Well, you, you should have picked a case. Because <laughs> if you <laughs> picked a case, case, vary so much in right. price. Like you could get one for like 50 bucks right. if you walk into fries today. But no disrespect to the, to Dell and the XPS 8700. I'm pretty sure a 50 dollar case is going to be the equivalent of the 8700. It will. Or yeah. your 50 dollar case is probably going to have sharper edges and, and <laughs> sort of. Well, Big deal. It, but but right. So basically, at this point, you're at the mid range yeah. and you're almost paying the same, but you're still exactly. like a hundred bucks. So I was like, huh, that's interesting. I okay. wonder what happens if I want to get like a hard hardcore gaming PC. You know, what happens when I want to get that really really hardcore one with crazy high gaming <laughs> GPU and everything? So crazy I, I high at, gaming. So you're getting like a, a 970 at, at this point. <laughs> yeah. So I looked at um, the Alienware Area 51, mm -hmm. and their options include. They're all Core i7s, which is great. Mm -hmm. They all have 16 gigs of memory, except for this lower end model, which it's has 8 gigs of memory. Got that glorious, crazy case. Glorious, crazy case. This one has the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 770. And I scroll down, and their prices are high range.
range up to 1600 all the way up to 4500 So what's what is in that That's that 1600 really or 1700 dollar system? What's in that? Obviously you get the distinctive triangular alien egg head yeah, it's so case pretty. thing. But what what how much RAM and what GPU are you getting in okay, that? Okay, let's click into there. So you get the AMD Radeon, I believe that was the 720. Let's scroll down a little bit. So if I click into configurations for this lower end model, which is $1,700 mm -hmm. from Alienware, you get the i7, which is a fifth generation, 5820. So that's definitely an upgrade. Pretty cool. You also get the AMD Radeon uh, 270 video card. And you get eight gigs of RAM, as well as two terabyte hard drive. So pretty nice. You know, it's it's very fancy, I'd say. I don't know if I want to pay for the case, but it's a yeah. it's a good build. I, the case, I don't know. Kind what of was your DIY price so for a similar So this is my collection DIY of cards? version. So I didn't go with the i7 fifth gen mm -hmm. because I personally wouldn't need that for my video gaming. I was able to build a rig for fourteen hundred twenty eight dollars, and okay. this is an i7 fourth gen Thermaltake. CPU cooler, I got the MSI Gaming ATX uh, motherboard, and then we have Corsair Vengeance with 16 gigs RAM. I love Corsair Vengeance, never had a problem with those. 840, uh, 500 gig M SATA SSD, as well as a two terabyte hard drive. And then I also got the 970 GeForce GTX by NVIDIA. So Fancy. But you basically, you picked a, a more expensive, you, you spent less money on the CPU, yep. more money on the GPU. Yep. Did you include a case in this one? No. Okay, so add a, this time let's I still add. have my case. Okay. So let's add like, what, 200 bucks for a really, really nice one? So then you're up at parity. I'm up at parity. Right. Exactly. Well, okay, so it's like, we didn't do exact comparisons here, but you get the idea you yeah. can, you know, take a little bit from here, add a little more from there. You get the advantage of choosing exactly the build you want. Um, and luckily, a lot of the ones that you buy nowadays, yeah. they do let you do different configurations, so you can choose those, but somebody else is still per making it for you, and you don't get a choice on the case. Well, I don't know. You know. It, and sometimes they come with really terrible keyboards and mouses. Well, I okay. I, and <laughs> we should point out, I, I, I don't... You know, I've been using, I've been carrying my nice keyboard and my nice mouse from system to system mm -hmm. Me too. for years. And I've had three systems simultaneously with the KVM using the nice keyboard and mouse. So please don't email askatechthing.com. You guys suck. You didn't include the cost of a monitor or the cost of a keyboard and mouse in that. Um, no, because most people. A lot we know, of times when you're doing a build, you already have those. Yeah. And you can reposition those for your new gaming PC. Especially in the gaming community, because so many people have invested significant money, whether mm -hmm. it's a Razer keyboard or my obsessive loyalty to the IBM Model M <laughs> keyboard. Um, but it's something to think about. Yeah. Um, probably should have included case prices in those, but I, I haven't bought But it. even if I do, it's it's not that much It's still another, difference. yeah, 50 bucks, 100 bucks, unless mm -hmm. you want to buy the super duper case, yeah. and, and then you can spend as much money yeah, as you Yeah, mid-tower, you can get a really good one for 100 bucks, you can 120. Get a, and you can get one that'll hold your parts in place and not mm -hmm. fall apart for 50 bucks. Yeah. Don't <laughs> cheap out on power supply. That's Very true. <laughs> so many problems in life are due to bad power supplies. And I should mention as well, this probably isn't going to be my final gaming build. This is just an example one. I'm still going to do a bunch more research and look at reviews for all these parts. So don't yell at me if you don't <laughs> agree. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Tech Thing is up on youtube.com slash C slash Tech Thing, and we got a bunch of comments on our second episode. Here's a few of our favorites. So we got a question from John, and he said, Hi, it's great to see you guys back on Tech Thing. In light of your new support model through Patreon, it would be interesting to learn more details about it, as well as how other tech shows and sites are supported and how each support model works. Thank you for putting on and continuing one of the best tech shows out there. Thank you, John. That Thank you really so sweet. much. Uh, advertising is the core of funding for the vast majority. You mentioned CNET, you mentioned Twit. Um, they both run on advertising. Mm -hmm. uh, we will accept advertising until, you know, as we build up, we will accept advertising unless our Patreon gets so large that uh, we can afford to not take advertising. Yeah, uh, and that's how we're able to give you free content. Yes. It's because we were able to take on sponsors and stuff like that. Yeah, so I mean, it's funny. Uh, we're trying something very, very new. Uh, Patreon was inspired kind of by Kickstarter and Indiegogo. Mm -hmm. the, the person who created Patreon did a video that got zillions of views on YouTube and had like a check for $200 and had built like a $7,000 set to make a super cool music video. So he said, there's got to be a way where I can bring the individual users into contact with the makers so that they can work together. 
Um, and that's what Patreon is, uh, patreon.com slash tech thing. Obviously, we're pushing it because we want the future of the program to be tied up with you guys. So if, if, if you guys still like us, we'll keep making this, and we can make it if you pay for it. Um, filthy lucre. <laughs> <laughs> but we also have this whole food, shelter, health insurance, you know, not living on the street Oh my gosh, health insurance is on. so expensive. <sighs> it is expensive. Welcome to America. Have kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no <laughs> You kidding. think it's expensive now? <laughs> have children. In any case, um, advertising, though, is the core of mm -hmm. the industry, whether you're talking about broadcast television, cable television, yeah. um, or I've seen a podcasts few, or video. I've seen a few podcasts do like a subscription-based mm -hmm. model thing, but I don't watch any of those personally. Well, I mean, you know, one of the things that started with, with Twit, you mm -hmm. know, our buddy Leo up in Petaluma, um, is he started with a tip jar, and then the tip jar oh, sort yeah. of yielded to advertising as the expenses of production got higher. So it's... You you know, there's in a lot of cases. I think the future, and you know, for example, Hack Five. We're here in the Hack House and the Hack Warehouse. Um, you know, Darren found out that selling hardware uh, is a way to make money. Um, Brian Brushwood, Schwood, um, Schwood sells swag. Schwood swag. Schwood swag. Schwood swag. <laughs> I don't know if that's a website or not. Yeah, I don't know. Merchandise should... is super fun too. Yeah. So you know, it's kind of like everybody's going to try a mixture. Is this is this my new sign for mixture of things? My mine is this, like yes. a mixing a cauldron. So we're going to try a mix of things and figure out which ones allows us to actually eat. And uh, hopefully, uh, you know, we're... I want to make t-shirts. T-shirts. Mm -hmm. As long as we don't have to individually spray paint each one. <laughs> Only you would have to do that part. Well, we, we actually do that a lot at my house for the kids. That way I believe we can, it. You know... Crafting. Some, Yay! There's nothing... Crafting <laughs> is good for you. In any case, that wraps up. If we're talking about crafting and stenciling, it's time to wrap up this episode of Tech Thing. We hope you liked it. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, the RSS feed is going to be up this week. Go to techthing.com to subscribe or search on iTunes. I'll tweet whenever it's actually released. <laughs> yeah. Or you can feel free to watch via our YouTube channel. Please go over there and subscribe. YouTube.com slash C slash Tech Thing. And um, as well, don't forget to back your stuff up. Mm -hmm. It's so important. And remember, once in a while, just put down your computer, put down the phone, even turn it off if you feel so obliged to, and do something analog, like going to the Spine Museum in Washington, D.C., which is super <laughs> awesome. Spy I went there museum. once. It was so cool. You could actually see, like, real-life spy equipment. Mm -hmm. Awesome. She loves spy equipment. It's really fun. Oh, my goodness. I'm Patrick Norton. I'm Shannon Morse. We'll see you next week on Tech Thing. I'm gonna get some spy cameras, some glasses, wear them while I'm driving. You're creeping me no, out. No, I think that's it. You're creeping me out. Yeah. <laughs> spy glasses. Spy glasses. With, with a little camera on them so I can record all the crazy drivers <laughs> in California. <laughs> this morning, this guy drives right across me while we had a red light. And I was just like, what you doing, dude? Oh my goodness, I had one of those yesterday. Guy blew through a stop sign. Crazy. Blew yeah. through a stop sign, cut me off, and then slowed down to pick his phone up off the floor and was oh, talking at his phone no. and then sat at the at the light in front of us after it turned green oh, for like 10 no. seconds.